trying to find a gap here, but... And the air's... Oh, there's contact! Freebies! Right side, left side. Oh, ha! Ah. What's up guys, Hobo88 here and welcome back to Assetto Corsa. It's been a little while but we are back because this mod has just released. Uh, it is the new S5000, a new open wheeler category that's just started in Australia recently and uh, this is a car that specifically interests me because it's something that's relatable. We see it here in Australia racing and uh, not only that, it's a cool piece of kit. It's, uh, it's pretty quick capable of about 300 k's an hour it's got a five liter v8 uh, about 550 horsepower thing is a rapid rapid car and uh i don't know we don't get much open wheeler racing here in australia so this one interests me in particular i'm keen to check it out i'll include some details in the description below if you want to find out how to get your hands on this as well but uh basically i'm keen to check this one out um we're going to go ahead and, and like i said run a race here at tail and bend i'll explain more about that during the video but Without waiting any further, let's get out there, let's get stuck into it. Assetto Corsa here in the S5000. Okay, mate, are you ready? Watch for the lights. All right, here we go, 16 laps, you heard the man. Tail and bend here in South Australia. Green, green, green. Ten car field starting eighth. Trying to find a gap here, but. And the air. Oh, there's contact. Freebies. Right side, left side. Oh, ah. Hold your line. The Clear seas left. have parted. Big lead for the leader, though. All aboard the choo-choo train. They're all right behind me. Oh no, we're off. That was lucky. So you might be wondering why I've chosen Tail and Ben as the track to test these on. And the answer is that I feel like this is actually a good track for testing cars like this on because it offers a lot of variation, a lot of different corner types. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. Got a bit of undulation, you got fast and Low speed corners. That was almost a big murder. We've got a horrible run down the straight. Car left. Still there. Oh. Alright, we gave those couple back up. Work to do. <laughs> Hold on to it. I've only done a handful of laps uh, to get ready for this race, so it's going to take me a little while probably to figure out what I'm doing. We race our way into the sunset here in South Australia, but. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Tail and Bend, although those some of you may already know this, but it is not a track that I particularly particularly like. Especially to spectate. Not not necessarily in person, but on the television. It's not a particularly interesting track to watch, I don't think. And I've talked about that in a previous video, you can dig that one up. In fact, if I remember, I'll try and link it at the end of the video. But the uh 
the fact of the matter is it's actually a pretty fun track to drive on and it's got a lot of different types of corners and yeah undulation and and really for a car like this in particular a lot of different things that i think would suit this car so that's why i decided to come and run here for this particular video I'm starting to settle down now and feel it out as we begin lap three But a fairly long race. Don't do that, though. <laughs> so we've got, a, we've got a little bit of time here to work our way forward. The leader is gone, though. Way up the road. So just a little bit of useful information, I guess, about... About how I've got this set up. 100% AI strength and straight out of the box with the setup. I didn't even open the garage. If I did, I wouldn't know what I was looking at anyway. It's certainly something a bit different for you guys on the channel here. Open wheelers, not a thing that I really ever drive, as you know. They're not a car that I usually enjoy driving. Um, I'm not... Oh my god, we're nearly crashing at the same spot every lap. We need to fix that. Um, I'm not typically good at driving cars with high downforce, so I don't do it a lot, which only makes things worse when I actually do go ahead and drive them, because I don't ever get any practice in them, so open wheelers and even things like prototypes and stuff like that, I just, I rarely ever drive. And, I mean... Typically, this type of racing doesn't interest me that much either. Like, I'm not a big open wheeler guy. That would be a very brave move. What am I even thinking? Don't go down there. Uh, it's just not something that I watch a lot of. But this kind of is the exception as far as... It's a series that runs here in Australia. It's something that has been talked about a lot and we're exposed to it here we see it with our supercars we see it with various different other things on the calendar and they are appealing to me because well firstly we haven't touched it on it yet the sound they sound mega oh i love it they sound so good and um in an era where so much motorsport, particularly open wheeler stuff, the cars are sounding worse and worse all the time. They're getting quieter and, you know, F1, for example, seems to be just on a steady decline from the glory days of the big V12 that we all love what we've got now as impressive as they are and as impressive as they sound in their own right they aren't what they used to be but these sound incredible so instantly that's appealing to me but what I also like about them is what I think you're probably seeing here and it's that they don't 
I mean, they don't look like they drive like a typical open wheeler. I don't. I would love to get some feedback, especially from someone who actually races these things or has a fair bit to do with them. Or just someone who understands the sport a lot better than I do, but they don't look like a high downforce car. Like, they don't drive like a high downforce car. They're very. I don't know, they. They almost remind me of like a 70s F1 car. Like, they. look heavy. They don't look like they drive like an F1 car, you know? Like, they're not loaded with downforce, and it feels like you can get good close racing with them, and it feels like when you watch them and it also feels like right here I can confirm you have to drive them they're not locked to the road hold it flat and just go fast everywhere you, you really have to drive them they're very difficult actually to drive hey we didn't spin out so they're challenging cars to drive And apart from the fact that you can wheel them in on a high-speed corner like this one right here, and they've got a lot of grip, so we get a really good run through there actually. They don't really feel like they drive like an open wheeler at all in the slow-speed stuff. Now I'm not sure how accurate that is, of course, the mod, whatever, but that's how it feels here. But it's also how they kind of look. They don't look especially easy to drive. And there's a lot of not being full throttle in corners. Can we actually get one down the inside here and make a move? He's still there. Clear right. Here we go. Done. Obviously being a, a bit of a preview video I guess of these cars and it being a new mod I'd love to get your thoughts about them let me know what do you guys think do you like these cars do you not like them I'd be interested to see what you guys think about them because from those that I've spoken to, a lot of people tend to agree with me. They may not necessarily be open wheeler fans, but they do enjoy these cars. And I think that's a proper achievement to have an F1 style open wheeler type car appeal to people that don't necessarily like that type of racing. We've got grass all over our tyres. Hear it flicking up. Make him do all the work. Focus on your exits. People do ask me uh, whether or not I follow F1, for example, or like this type of racing or whatever. I actually watch every F1 race and I do enjoy the narrative in F1. Historically, I'm not a fan of the racing in F1 because normally it is not that close. I get so frustrated by the follow the leader type stuff and the constant attempt to invent ways to make the racing better, be it with things like Kurs, DRS, all this sort of stuff. It's not I don't particularly like that. But the F1 story has been interesting. I think Drive to Survive has been a huge asset to the way that F1 is perceived and it's created a lot more interest for me. It gets, gets you a lot more of the story behind the scenes and makes it all a lot more interesting. And I've, I've actually really enjoyed F1 lately. I'm enjoying this season. Like I said, I watch every race. Historically, I've always watched the first sort of... Usually, I watch up to Monaco. Monaco being my favourite Grand Prix of this year, as it is for many. Even though the racing is typically horrible. Oh, we've done it again. Too fast through there. And there's just no grip. 
Touch the brakes and it doesn't stop. Please don't give up the spot. Still there. Still there. Clear left. But yeah, in the last couple of seasons in particular of... I mean, last year probably helped that there, with COVID there just was not much happening. So the fact that F1 was running meant there was a form of motorsport we could actually watch. Um, so I did watch the full season last year and I really enjoyed it and that's continued on to this year. So I'm not a complete open wheel snob, you know, like, I do watch a little bit of it, but it is not the sort of racing that interests me, typically, and therefore is not the sort of racing that I do on the sim. But if you guys want to see more of it, more videos like this one, you have to let me know like watching me struggle because clearly I don't know what I'm doing. Although we haven't actually crashed yet, which is good. I'd say that touching wood. That would ride a car off if you did that in real life. That's rough out there normally. Try limits, keep in between the lines. We're just over halfway, we've still got plenty of time here. I'm just still trying to figure out the lines and stuff here. Maybe we should concentrate on that for a lap instead of talking. Okay, mate. Don't let this guy distract you. Apex hunting down there at the left hander again. say this long right hand sweeping section is a lot of fun in these sort of cars with a little bit more grip. In a supercar it's like a bit tedious but gap to Busy Keller and ahead is now 0.4 car right still there Side's clear. Great move. Keep it up. Sun starts to set. Shadows get long. Well done, mate. This is great. Get six laps here to try and make up the difference here. Get to the lead. The leader has not pulled away since the start. In fact, we've actually reeled him in. It's much nicer through there. We actually stop in an apex here. That's better. Not perfect, but better. Oh, that's not good. Don't go out there. Oh. That was almost death right there. Don't want to run wide at that spot. We're very lucky that this particular mod, the grass isn't very slippery. All very rough. So good. Good to know. Oh, little brake lock. You heard the little squeal. I don't actually know if that was a front brake or a rear brake. Slightly off in second one.
I think this is the first time I've actually driven a car in a sim that has a halo on it. Although it is quite chunky when you look at it. You don't really even notice it's there. Except when you're driving down the straight and you're trying to see a car way up in the distance. Because it's smaller. Sort of get blinded a little bit. When you're like me and you need the cars in front to use as a brake marker. <laughs> that doesn't help. Flames look pretty cool out of the back. Oh, a bit wide. Everyone loves exhaust flames. from the very start where I was pretty raggedy and a bit all over the place I feel like once you start to get smooth and understand the car hit your marks a bit better it probably doesn't do any justice to just how difficult these cars are to drive for you guys to watch like it's not as easy as it perhaps looks you are on the limit a lot Oh, that's a bad, that's a bad deal right there. Thought I was going to run into him. Ended up exiting stage left. There's just no grip on the tyres when they get grass on them. Noticed a Hoosier racing slick tyre. Did not know that Hoosier made these type of tyres. I just uh, associate Hoosier tyres with dirt racing. Don't let this guy intimidate you. P2. I actually have seen Hoosier car tyres, I think, before. I guess that's along the same lines as this. You guys can't see the mirrors or a delta or anything like that, but us top three have closed right up here. sure we've got a small pace advantage in that long right hand section there. Oh. I was a little too close to him to actually carry the momentum. I'd like to get past here and just see if we could do a couple of laps towards the end of this race in clean air. He's just like wiggling around everywhere.
really any aero gain in the draft, so to speak. That doesn't seem quite right. Oh, it's pretty good around here. Pretty evenly matched. I think there's probably two or three spots on the track where I know we've got an advantage. One of them is here. That left hand fast sweeper. Back there at about turn five or whatever it is. move and now we've got two laps here to try and build a gap I think we're about as comfortable and as confident as we're going to be now These guys went side by side behind me. They are racing hard behind me. But we're just going to drive away. Almost got in the grass though on the side. That would have been awkward. Oh, we did touch the grass there. That's Don't do that. I don't know if it's because we've got clean air now and there's no turbulence or it's just a confidence thing or what, but I feel so much quicker now that we're out in clean air. Did do two purple micro sectors on that last lap. Well, in the end, that turned out to be a much more enjoyable drive than I was expecting. These cars are a lot of fun. 
like I said before, if you want to see more of this sort of stuff on the channel, let me know. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook at Hobbo88, twitch.tv forward slash Hobbo88. Check out the live streams. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.